Hey, so Dan at the beginning talked about scaling and uh, this talk is really about scaling stuff to like huge sizes and it's about astronomical data per se. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm Rahul, I'm from the uh, Initiative in Innovative Computing at Harvard. Uh, it's a new uh, cross-disciplinary organization there with a lot of cool projects, so I encourage you to check it out. Uh, in astronomy, I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to concentrate on stellar astronomy, which is the study of light from stars. It's essentially the study of the brightness of a star and how that varies over time. And there are all sorts of interesting variations. And these variations happen in multiple fields. And so we got together and created this uh, organization called the Time Series Center. And it's a bunch of computer scientists, statisticians, uh, and people from various fields. So you could be studying you know, stock market time series, you could be studying cardiograms, you could be studying all kinds of stuff. And patterns repeat in these, and we want to find these patterns. Here are some of the algorithms. I'm really not going to go over these, but just to give you an idea, you probably recognize a lot of these words. And we use these algorithms to study phenomena in astronomy, such as planetary transits. And uh, that's the example which is out here. You have this planet which is moving in front of a star. And as it's moving in front of a star, essentially it sort of shadows the star, so, that, so the light dips. And depending upon the shape of that dip and the length of that dip, essentially you can figure out you know, uh, what, what the speed of the, of the planet was and what the size of the planet was. So here's the problem in astronomy. Uh, surveys going on today, like TOS, which is going on in Taiwan at this particular moment, you know, generate data about 30, about 40 gigabytes per night. Uh, that's not much. However, in about six years, when the LSST telescopes in Chile go online, we'll be generating about 50 terabytes per night. That's about one to two gigabytes per second of data. And there's lots of analysis that needs to be done to this data, and we have to figure out how to scale it. So it's a really, really hard problem. The other people who have this problem are, of course, the big financial companies, and I'm guessing the ones who do it well will win. So what is scaling? We have computation we want to do with this high volume of data. Uh, we want to be able to distribute this data out to various groups so that they can do some of their own analysis. Uh, we want also to be able to get a v extremely low latency access to this data. And low latency is important because if you don't have low latency, we're not going to keep up with 50 terabytes per night. We only have the next day to do something with this. So uh, here's the trouble, that no matter where we go, it seems that you know, the network is typically slower than disk, and disk is typically slower than compute. So the network's always going to be slower, so we must do most of this computation in the data center itself. Of course, we have a model for this. Uh, I mean, Web 2.0 companies have been doing this for quite a while, where you have your computations, you have your queries, uh, you expose these as URLs, and once you expose these as URLs, you can write a program which goes off to these various URLs, has various computations done at these URLs, collates the data, puts them together, gets some sensible answer out of it. We do this today, for example, at the Time Series Center when we need to make cuts on our data. So here's an example uh, from Killer Asteroids. Uh, this is the, one of the main aims of the PanStars telescope. It's actually being funded by the US Air Force. And uh, it's to find killer asteroids. And so if suppose Survey A found a killer asteroid, it looked through tons and tons of image data and it reduced those image data to, to brightness versus time. And if, you, and if you think about it, if an asteroid is going in front of a bunch of stars, it's going to dip the light from the stars. Okay? So you see this and you say, hey, okay, is that, is that real or is that, is that something that could have come from random? And so you send it off to another web service at the Time Series Center, which figures that out. And then it says, okay, well, uh, it's random. I forget about it. Uh, well, oh, it's not random. Okay. Let's go and ask other surveys to take measurements because this is critical. And so other surveys take measurements at different times. You figure out, uh, you figure out an orbit, and lo and behold, you figure out that you're going to be obliterated in the next you know, few days, essentially. So you, so, you say, so you send this off to the generals, and you know, they, they come up with the war on asteroids and mission accomplished and, and all that stuff, essentially. But this is the easier part of the problem, right? I mean, the harder part of the problem is uh, the problem of, of data itself. Um, so we can do normal things with the data that we do for relational databases like partitioning and denormalization and stuff. But the more interesting things that need to be, da uh, need to be done to the data have to do with indexing and storage. Because you know, it's a hard problem. How are you going to access 50 terabytes of data? So uh, here are two examples. Uh, in the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, Gray et al. came up with the, tiling, uh, with the triangular tiling of the, of the spherical sky so that you can make queries much faster. And there's about 70 terabytes of data in Google Earth. Uh, and you know, to, to, to do this fast, essentially, uh, they came up with a method by which they store data in contiguous rows. And 
the images themselves on contiguous servers, so things come up pretty fast. Uh, if you're doing light curves, it's even worse because you have to compare light curves. So you have to come up with some notion of distance or similarity and do the indexes for light curves. So the problem is here that we want to retrieve data. The data could be belonging to multiple indices and multiple algorithms, so you need to write a query optimizer to figure this out. And furthermore, if you have found something like a killer asteroid and you want to be able to cache this killer asteroid, you need to do this in real time. So you need a fast, low latency algorithm to do this. And you need balanced indices, you know, using things like R trees and M trees, where you can actually add stuff in. And so these are hard questions and, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done into it. And one of the really nice things is that, you know, big companies like Microsoft and Google who have invested in this scale of infrastructure are actually interested in astronomy. Google's a member of LSST, for example. And we do need a partnership to actually figure out the answers to some of these questions. Thanks.